Hello, my name is Damien. I'm an actor, writer, producer, and also I'm a grateful son. Tomorrow's mystery, yesterday's history, today's money in the bank, baby. It's about the now, this moment. 36436 36 is brought to you by The Late Night Experiment with Motown Maurice. Subscribe today on YouTube. So, you know, growing up, my dad, uh, you know, he was a geek. Um, I had these expectations. He being from the Middle East, uh, I had to learn to play baseball, football, and basketball from my friend's dads. My dad couldn't do it. So what happened in life is I just started going a half a degree bubble off. Also being from the Middle East, I was raised Muslim. And being raised Muslim in a Catholic society was very, very challenging. So here I am growing up Muslim in a Catholic society. I'd be at my neighbor's house, we'd be having lunch, and I'm having this conversation. You know, Joey, it's too bad you're going to hell because you don't believe the way I believe. And Joey's saying the same thing to me. And it just struck me kind of as odd is why would God kind of do that? You know, and then I go home and, and we had all these ritual things that we had to do, praying five times a day, being woken up at dawn, you know, going Sunday to the mosque. It's, it's nothing special like church. Sometimes we have to go on Friday. It was just, then there's Ramadan where we had a fast one month. I mean, it was just these things. And I had Christmas until I was like 13 years old. And then he said, no more. It was like, what, 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 what's going on? He goes, we don't believe that. So it just left this really bad taste in my mouth. Now I'm, it's my senior year in high school, getting ready to go to college, and we're not even in the same hemisphere. What helped me cope was, you know, I found alcohol and drugs, and, and back up real quick, being raised Muslim, we're not supposed to do any mind-altering substances. So there goes the drinking and drugging, premarital sex, and hoofed animals. And I figured two out of three ain't bad. Maybe I can sneak into heaven through the back door. You know, so, like I said, we're not even there, and I'm partying every night now, and I'm smoking my joints, and drinking beer, and all that kind of stuff, going to concerts, dancing with women, having relationships that I'm not supposed to be having, but I'm enjoying life, and those things really saved my life, and if I hadn't found that, I probably wouldn't be here today. You have someone else sitting in this chair. So now I'm 25. Um, I started drinking at 19. Six years, it kicked my ass. Uh, by the grace of God, I found recovery. Um, that's a whole nother story. But what happened in that is I met this lady, became the love of my life. She moved to Arizona and I followed. So I roughly had about two years and I'm in Arizona now and uh, she's working at AT&T Business and I'm working at AT&T Residential. And now it's about, uh, we stayed friends for a while, I want to say 96, 97. Um, I'm at at and in Arizona, uh, doing a special project for California. Um, being in recovery too, you know, I started making phone calls back to home to mom, let her know I'm doing okay and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and what happened is I get this phone call and well, I'm gonna call her Mrs. Gordon. And uh, she's all, you guys are ripping me off. I can't believe it, you know, and I'm all Mrs. Gordon, let, give me a chance to fix your problem and see what's going on here. And she goes, I look at the bill and I go, Mrs. Gordon, it's simple math. You're not carrying the one. And she's all, what? I go, Mrs. Gordon, this, this, you carry the one, you carry the one, you carry the one. And then finally she gets it. Oh my God, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And I look and, and it must have been at least half an hour to 45 minutes. And she goes, I need your name, I need your name. I go, you need my name? She goes, yeah, I'm gonna write a letter to at and You've been awesome. I said, okay, not a problem. My name is Damien Hajar. She goes, Hajar? And that was my reaction. I was all like, what? Because nobody gets my name the first time. Nobody, unless you heard it before. And she goes, I want you to know something. I'm all, what's that, Mrs. Gordon? She goes, back in 1974, my son was at Long Beach VA Hospital. And he had a doctor there that saved his life named Dr. Hajar. And I was all like, whoa, what? She goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, wow, that was my dad. He was an intern in 1974 at Long Beach VA Hospital. And she goes, I want you to know something else. And I'm all, what's that, Mrs. Gordon? He made me a grandmother today. And I was just like, whoa, I 
I just had these chills. And I was like, wow, that's my dad. And what that did is it started to mend our relationship. I call that the chicken soup of the soul moment for myself, man. It was just, just incredible. You know, afterwards I, I got off the phone. I mean, I was just like blown away, man. Blown away. So that one phone call starts to mend our relationship. And, and I have 12 years to work on this thing. And what that did is it gave the it gave my mom the comfort to give me the phone call in 2009 now, almost 12 years later, that my dad has cancer. So I take a trip home to get the facts. Everything looks good. He's doing well. He's doing treatments. And I get ready to go back to Arizona, and I tell her, look, when it gets real bad, give me a call, and I'll be out. Um, get the phone call, 2012, it's time to come home. I was like, wow. So uh, I let my job know. Now I'm working at Trader Joe's, uh, trying to do a transfer. Uh, I finally get my happy ass home, and, uh, and I'm sitting there. I'm 40, wow, man, 44 years old living in my old room, in my old house, and there's Pops. And I'm just like, wow. And all that stuff I talk to you becomes rushing back. And what I start to realize is, wow, what a selfish, self-centered son of a, I've been, man, for lack of better words. You know, and I'm looking at this man and, uh, and I realize, you know, he did the best he could with what he had. His goal was to become a doctor and then go back to his home country. He had me and my sister and he stayed, you know, and I'm just like, wow. And then, uh, on January 26th of this year, he lost his fight with cancer and, uh, and I got to be there. And as painful as that was, what an honor to be there. And his wish was to go back to his home country and be buried, which is Nejif, Iraq. And, and I got the honor and privilege to do that. And I got to tell him as he was going through this transition, ready and ready to move on, is that I love him. And I have a lot of respect for him. What I come to realize is the gifts my father has is that he saves lives, both physically and spiritually. And what I mean spiritually is that he's a religious leader in Islam, very well respected, uh, very well loved, extremely integral, very honest, extremely humble. And these are qualities that I inherited. And I'm, I'm proud to be an Arab American. I guess what I want you to get out of this is please don't judge a book by its cover because it's not on the outside what counts, it's what's on the inside. And the other thing too is if you have a loved one, mom, dad you're not talking to, cousin, brother, sister, pick up the phone and just say, hey, you know what? I love you. I just want you to know that I love you. I might not like you right now, we might have issues right now, but just let that person know you love them because life is way too short to take for granted. There's no guarantee on tomorrow. No guarantee. It's about this moment right here, right now. I met this gentleman called Motel Maurice, and he had me, he had me, be a part of the late night experiment with Motel Maurice. I'm like, what, what is that? He goes, trust me, man. So I got to be in season four the last episode and season six the last episode, and what a great experience. I got to play Bubba. And that's all I'm gonna say. Oh, baby, it's okay if I'm this year. We all want to be a part of history. Can you imagine being on the steps of Dr. Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech? Or being at the inauguration of President Barack Obama? Or Michael Jackson's last concert? Well, I have something as momentous as this. It's called The Late Night Experiment with Motown Maurice. It's living history. Check it out now on the web. 
The Late Night Experiment with Motown Maurice is a story about a relentless crusader determined to achieve his destiny as a nationally syndicated late night talk show host. Subscribe and explore his odyssey today.